Tom Nappy here. You are tuned in to HCAM Sports Talk Live. Thank you for joining us. And today on the show, we have the Hopkinton Hillers Alpine Ski Team. And uh, we have the captains joining us as well as the coaches. So let's go around the table and we'll have everyone introduce themselves and talk about what they do on the team. We'll start off with Nancy. Hi, I'm Coach Nancy. I have been the head coach of the Hopkins Ski Team for five years, and I work with new racers and advanced racers every winter to see how far we can push it and how fast we can get on the hill. Terrific. Uh, and how about Daniel? Hi, this is Dan Barry. I'm the assistant coach. I help out Nancy. I've been working side by side with Nancy since the team formed so five years ago. And uh, I help Nancy sort of optimize the time on the hill for the kids so that the racers are getting the best out of their training time on the hill and help coordination on the races as well. Excellent. And um, how about C. Barry? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Kate. I'm a senior at Hoppington High School, and this is my second year being a captain um, on the ski team. Terrific. Uh, Jackson. Hi, I'm Jackson. I'm one of three captains, first year captain, four year racer for high school, and I'm excited to be on snow. Terrific. And last but not least, Tori. Hi, I'm Tori. I'm a junior, and this is my second year on the team, and I'm a captain this year. Excellent. So uh, first off to um, the captains out there, how long have you been skiing for? Uh, what got you into skiing? Um, just talk about your background in uh, skiing a little bit. Uh, we'll start off with Kate. Um, I have been skiing for pretty much as long as I can remember. Um, I got into skiing. Um, because my dad, he was a skier um, when he grew up and through his life. So that's how I got into skiing. Um, and then I got into ski racing at a pretty young age as well. And then I just stuck with it all these years. Terrific. How about you, Jackson? Uh, pretty much after I started walking, my mom taught me how to ski. Uh, true story. Nasker. And then... I kind of, we moved to New England. There's not very good snow here. So we decided the best way to maintain skiing was to join racing. So around six or seven, I joined the Wachusa Mountain Race Team. And then as soon as I entered high school, the new team was starting up and I thought it was a great opportunity to combine my love of high school sports with my love of skiing. All right, how about Tori? Um, so my story is a little bit different. I was a swimmer for a really long time and I had skied recreationally and for fun um, since I was pretty little. But um, after my freshman year swimming for the high school swim team, I decided that I was getting a little bored of swimming. So Nancy encouraged me to join the ski team and I'm back this year and I'm really loving it. Terrific. All right. Well, um, this ski program just got started up recently uh, for the coaches. Could you talk about the history of the program a little bit and how it ended up getting started? Sure. Dan and I have been around since the uh, first idea of having a ski team for high school. Um, we had a bunch of parents from uh, Wachusett mountain race team in the area. And we had little ones at the time. And we thought it would be fun when they got big enough for high school that it would be great to have a high school ski program. So we started pursuing what that would mean and how to start one. And it was about a three year um, process of learning how to start a high school team with MIAA. We went to many meetings, talked to a lot of uh, administrators, talked to a lot of the leagues around the area to find out if we could be a good fit and what it would take to start a team. Um, Hopkinton um, worked through the process with us and five years ago we got the green light from them and we got a green light from our league and um, ski ward and we just started rolling from there. Um, I've been coaching for about 10 years now so it was an easy fit to help out and get a coach for the high school and work with these kids from all different backgrounds to give them a winter sport that's outside the building and with a lot of fresh air around. It's terrific. And uh, this program has come a long way in the last couple of years. 
Um, I understand you finished second place in a couple of meets so far this season. Can you talk about how this year has gone? This year has been phenomenal for us. Um, we have a huge group of seniors on the team that have been with us for four years. We've got some great juniors that have been with us for a couple of years, um, two to three years at this point. And a few new people, um, freshmen and sophomores, jumping into the sport for the first time. So it's been um, a good mix of recreational skiers and racers. And um, better or worse, the weather has kind of been on our side. I don't want to say that too loudly because we still have a couple more weeks left. And so um, the format that we adapted for um, COVID year to keep social distancing and keep the kids racing has worked well. It's been great to see a crew of Hopkinton come down the hill and they're supporting each other wonderfully. Okay. So um, this last week, um, we again finished with our top girl and top boy for our pod night, our league pod. That would be Kate and Jackson. And then um, the girls team also um, stayed strong in second place and the boys have taken over first place. That's terrific. Um, and how, how, how much has this program grown uh, since you've started it, it seems like the roster just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It has. We went from a let's try and see what we can do and get what kids are interested. And we were thinking maybe five or six um, high school racers. Um, but and we've always had low girl numbers. Um, Kate has been one of the two founding members of the team for the girls team which has now grown to nine girls, which has been great over the years to see the growth in the girls um, team on that league. And the boys, we've had a pretty steady group of boys, anywhere up to 16 boys. This year we're a little lower because we had to keep our numbers down, but um, we are becoming one of the bigger teams in our league, which is great to see. We want to get more kids on the hill and more kids having a winter sport that they can do. We're a non-cut sport. So we welcome all abilities of skiers to join us and take on this new adventure. So even if you're like me and you're totally inexperienced and not too good, you could join the team. Yeah. Dan and I have always said, as long as you can get on and off a chairlift and ski and get down a blue slope, we can work with you at ski ward. <laughs> <laughs> My best abilities in skiing are uh, skiing backwards and not on purpose and running into people. Cause I can't. Perfect. Stop. <laughs> You'll fit right in. <laughs> Uh, Nancy and Daniel, can you talk about your background in skiing a little bit and um, what encouraged you uh, to end up wanting to uh, coach this program? Uh, we'll start off with Nancy. Oh, I was going to let Dan talk. Um, <laughs> I have been skiing since I was a middle schooler. Um, I pursued my degree as an outdoor education, so I've been a big time backcountry skier, telemark skier, and mountaineer. Um, moved out west, fell in love with the Rocky Mountains, did a lot of instruction of skiing out there. I became a PSI ski instructor when I was out there as well. And when we moved east, I um, started looking at race teams and volunteering with them and brought my children into those race teams and started getting my um, coaching hat on and learning how to coach. And it's grown since then. I've um, become a multiple certified USA race coach and I've been teaching um, young adults or young children and budding adults how to ski race for about 10 years now. That's terrific. How about you, Daniel? Yeah, so some, uh, pretty similar to Nancy. I grew up in, in Western Mass where, where skiing was just a part of life from a very young age. I remember in elementary school going to the after school programs out of a little hill called Bosque and uh, Jiminy Peak out in Western Mass and Brody, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, so I've skied my entire life. Um, I too spent some time out West in Colorado when I was in the service. So I got the a taste of the, the mountains out there for many years and absolutely loved it. Uh, and then came back here. And, um, you know, when my children were born, Kate and her younger daughter, Allie, who's also a racer on the team, um, I just wanted to get them involved in the sport as, as young as possible because that's the best time to learn. Uh, so we did that and, you know, we just sort of happened into the racing, into the racing circuit. They took to it quickly. Uh, they love it. And uh, once they got old enough and joined a USSA team, the, the Wachusett team, um, I received my USSA certification as a coach as well. Um, you know, met Nancy and, you know, saw we had very similar interests in terms of getting a team going in Hopkinton and, and the rest is history. That's terrific. And uh, this season we have been airing 
uh, the home ski meets on HCAM. And for those that don't know, because we get a lot of viewers tuning in, can someone just talk about how these meets work? Uh, what exact what exactly is involved in a, different types of contests? Sure, Dan, correct me if I go astray on this one, because this year is a little different. <laughs> what we've been doing this year, if you're tuning into HCAM, is we have broken up our 10 teams that usually race at Ski Ward, which used to be on Thursdays. We've broken up into two pods. So we have five teams um, racing on Tuesday nights and we have five teams on Thursday nights. So HCAM has been following us to Hopkinton, which were a Thursday night um, pod. And there's five other high schools or a total of five. We have um, Westboro, King Phillips, Algonquin and Medway is our high school pods that we're racing with. It's a little different than the Tri-Valley League. And it's, we used to um, kind of zipper the kids that all the top kids from each team would go first and then we do a different seed list to get everybody on the hill. This year we're racing as a high school. So all my girls and boys line up together. We have two courses going and 30 seconds between a racer, they're coming down the hill. So um, and we rotate through the rotation with the five teams. Like we started in the last position at our first race, which was number five. And now this coming week, we're going to be in position one. So if you tune in early for HCAM, you're going to get Hopkinton right off the bat coming down the hill at you. All right. So there it is. Tune in. Well, right at seven, right? Yep. All right. That's terrific. Um, so to the captains out there, uh, what are some of the things that uh, you've worked on to get ready for this season. And obviously we had the whole uh, pandemic situation. So I'm sure that uh, limited time at some resorts, but what are some of the things that you do in the preseason to get ready? And maybe some of the skills that you're working on for this season. Uh, we can start off with Kate. Um, going into my senior year and especially with the limited amount of skiing available, um, I've really just been trying to work on a positive mindset, um, especially with all the different things that are going on and how it's been different um, from past years. So I guess um, this preseason, I was just working on going into it with a positive mindset and then keeping that positive mindset. Um, but skills wise, I've just been looking to um, be aggressive in the course and stick with it all the way, even if I have a tough run. Um, I've been looking just to keep up my strength and um, just make it make it through the course as fast as possible. <laughs> That's terrific. Positive mindset, certainly important. How about you, Jackson? What are some of the things you've been working on? For the preseason, my main goal was to get as much skiing in as possible. Uh, given the limited amount of conditions we had early on, we weren't able to set as many gates and courses as we would like to train. So I focused on doing as much runs on the slopes and working off the course on what I can do in the course to help. And I've been accomplishing that by not only training with high school, but training outside of high school and going up on weeknights to other mountains to uh, get runs in. Terrific. Uh, is there any particular mountain that you go to that's your favorite? Uh, I can't really name favorites, but the closest one that would be worth training at is uh, Wachusett. It's only about an hour, 40 minutes away, 40, 50. So it's a, it's a good drive to a slope ratio. Excellent. Uh, Tori, how about you? What are some of the things you've been working on to get ready for the season and some of the things you're working on throughout the season? Yeah, you know, COVID restrictions have made it hard this season to travel um, like between states. So I can't really go up to like Vermont or New Hampshire to train some of the mountains up there. So I've been trying to, you know, ski at Jiminy Peak and watch use it just to get in mountain time. Um, and then also I run cross country in the fall. So kind of continuing running, doing like outside workouts, just trying to be as prepared as possible for when I do have like actual training time open. Um, and then also in terms of like COVID restrictions, like our season hasn't really changed all too much to altogether. Um, so, you know, we're really grateful that we still have a lot of opportunities and that our AD is working really hard to make sure that we have like the best season we possibly can, keeping it fun and competitive and getting us as much time as possible out on the mountain. And you must certainly be happy to be out there uh, this year. 
for sure. All right. So um, to the coaches, I'm curious. So let's say somebody's coming into this program inexperienced. What's some of the first advice that you would give an inexperienced skier? Uh, we'll start off with Daniel for this one. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a great, great question, Tom. Um, you know, I, I'd say uh, grit and persistence pays off. Um, you know, I think I think Kate may have alluded to this uh, in, in one of the earlier questions, but this is a sport that can be very difficult. Um, the technical aspects of it are very difficult, but you're also contending with other things like the elements. You know, it can be very cold, like it was last night during the race. It can be windy. It can be too warm. The snow can be sticky. It can be icy. There are all sorts of things um, that you can point to to make it difficult. Um, but the challenge in this sport is recognizing what those variables are, making the necessary adjustments and then doing the best you can because everybody else is contending with those same challenges. So I would say, uh, you know, persistence and grit is, goes a long way and can compensate for, you know, lack of racing experience in the past. That's, I think that's very good advice right there. Uh, Nancy, uh, how about you? What's some of the advice you would give uh, an inexperienced skier? Well, on top of everything that Dan says, just to keep with it, it's not going to come easy. You're going to wind up with bruises. You're going to wind up falling. But the fact that you get back up and you try again is going to pay off in huge dividends because we do two different kinds of courses. We do GS and slalom. GS is a speed course, which a lot of um, even beginner racers can uh, manage because it's just kind of mind over matter to get around the gates and go as fast as you can. When we get into a slalom, it's really technical and a lot of recreational skiers um, are not used to turning that quickly. So what I love about our recreational skiers that come into it is when they see slalom, they want to learn it. They wanna figure it out. They know it's not gonna be easy, but just keep getting after it and keep trying new things. And we're here to help and give them advice, but it's ultimately them and the gates in the snow with whatever conditions are going to get thrown at them. So these guys are pretty tough by the end of the season. Anybody who's done ski racing, they know it could come and go just like a snap of a finger for how that run went. So. Absolutely. I could, I know from personal experience, it takes a whole lot of practice. That's for sure. Um, so to the captains, um, any future plans to ski perhaps after your Hillers days or perhaps uh, participate in any other sports uh, at the co collegiate level or something like that. Uh, Tori? Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm still a junior, so I luckily have another year on the team next year. Um, but the colleges that I am looking at are mostly in the north or colder places. So I'm hoping to ski, you know, maybe recreationally or club skiing, something like that, but for sure. Terrific. How about you, Jackson? Uh, I'm trying to keep a optimist mindset right now because I'm not quite sure what next year will look like for, for sports in college, but um, it, it would be nice to join a club and I kind of feel like I'm heading in that direction. Terrific. And how about you, Kate? Um, I'm definitely have a pretty similar view on it. Um, this as Jackson does um, really just trying to focus on where I'm going to go to college first and right. then I can decide <laughs> if I um, am going to ski for um, a club or anything like that, or, but I'll definitely keep up. I'm skiing for skiing for fun. I'll definitely keep that up. Terrific. Uh, well, I know you are all uh, very skilled out there and uh, getting some good results. And it's certainly been fun to watch on H cam. I saw in a couple of weeks, it said there was a championship meet, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, can anybody explain what that's about? The coaches are actually getting together um, tonight to discuss how we can do uh, pod championships because this year MIA is not doing any championships and we can't cross over pod. So it could be on our last night before, I think it's the 11th or 12th, actually it's the 11th of February, we'll have some kind of way to celebrate the season. So more to come on that. We'll have more details by next week. But we also want to thank HCAM because um, not only are family and friends who cannot come to the bottom of the hill to cheer on, enjoying watching this, but we have a lot of um, grandparents across the country that are tuning in. 
And what I've seen from our racers is after a day of racing, they go home to watch what they did on the hill. So they're using the videotape to critique their performances. So that's a great benefit to having you guys out there videotaping for us. <laughs> it's become a great training tool, Tom. So I, I concur. A great shout out to HCAM. It's worked out really well for us this year, and we appreciate the time. I bet. Well, we certainly uh, enjoy doing it, and it seems like this program's only going to get bigger from here. Um, so congratulations to uh, you two coaches, uh, Nancy and Daniel, for the terrific work you've done at uh, developing this program and uh, making it get bigger as the years go on. And uh, congratulations to the captains for leading the way for this Alpine ski program. Seems like it has a very bright future, uh, but I want to thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you.